Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Praise God. Tonight, I want to share something. I thought in my heart that has been there for quite a long time. And uh, I have always wanted to share it. And so I thank God that he has given me the opportunity to share that thought. Praise God. And I believe you're going to be blessed. Praise God. You're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. It began in a thought that came to me years ago when I was reading the story of the prophet Elisha. The man that takes over, Elijah, lives a good life, does double the anointing and miracles of his master, and then... Uh, in uh, 2 Kings 13 verses 20, the Bible says Elisha died and they buried him. Say amen. He died and they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land of the coming in of the yard. That means immediately when the prophet, the voice of that nation died, enemies attacked immediately. That means Elisha was the strength and salvation, the preservation of Israel. Somebody say amen. He knew where the enemies were coming from. He used to warn the king of the Assyrians and all their neighboring enemies. And so when Elisha died, the enemies pounced on Israel immediately because they got ear that the defender of Israel had ascended into glory. But my area of function here, purposely, is touching the 21st verse. And the Bible says, And it came to pass that as they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men while they were going to bury a man who had died in war. And because they saw a band of men, there was no way to carry him. And so they cut the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. And to see that after one year of the death of this prophet, his sepulcher is so open that it can easily be accessed, disturbed me. Although that's not the area of what I'm going to share. But if a man like Elisha, remember when Elijah is going, he says, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw Elijah no more. And later on also, when Joash meets Elisha, then in the time of Elisha's day, Joab says, my father, my father, the horseman, the chariot of Israel and the horseman thereof. So when Joash tells Elisha that the anointing on you is the horseman and chariot of Israel, that is powerful when you think about it. That means Joash saw in Elisha what Elisha saw in Elijah. Are you following me? He was the horseman and chariot of Israel. When they say the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof, that means he is the strength and protection of Israel. That's just how much one man was anointed. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's just how much one man was what? Was anointed. He was as anointed as the protection of Israel. Some trust in horses, the Bible says, and chariots. 
But the Bible says, but we shall trust in what? In the Lord. And this trust in God. But a lighter and a lighter heart toward God. Met them the chariot and the horsemen of Israel. For the Bible says, the Egyptians are men and not God. And their horses are flesh and not spirit. Meaning that when a man understands how to war in the spirit, all these other physical things are useless. Somebody shout hallelujah. And these men knew how to wage war well spiritually. They knew how to protect Israel. So imagine the horsemen and chariot of Israel. The protection. The very hope Israel can look to and know that they have peace in their borders. To get to a level where one man carries enough anointing to protect a whole nation by his existence. That is power. Somebody shout Amen. But even deeper than that, the scriptures tell us one day, the Assyrians attack Elisha. You remember that story? And they want to what? They want to kill him. Why? Because they realize that he's the one which is telling on their attacks. But the scriptures tell us that even though he was protecting Israel, Israel was not his protection. Who has understood what I just said? Even though he was protecting what? Israel. Israel was not his what? Protection. Because if Israel was his protection, then there is no way the Assyrian can encamp around the prophet's house when he is in the confines of the protectorate of Israel. Who has understood what I just said? So a whole nation was safe because of one man. Yet that man did not need to count on Israel to keep him. He must have put his dwelling far away from the protection of Israel. <laughs> I wish we understand what being a man of God is. Some men are seeking the protection of Israel. Men of God are seeking Israel to protect them. And there's another man of God who says, I have enough God to do without your protection. Because of the anointing on my life, I am the one to protect you, not the other way around. Can you think about it in our day? Where a great man of God can walk alone and not worry? Who has understood what I just said? Where a great man of God can walk and not worry that he can be touched. Because he knows he is the reason a nation is protected. And there's another one walking, being protected. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? One man is being protected jealously because they are protecting the anointing. Another one is separating himself from the protection of Israel because he knows their horses are flesh and not spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not against the usual security government offers under the law. I have a problem when it's overdone. You understand what I'm saying? I have a problem with the laws of the land giving the relevant security. To run these meetings, the police tells me I have to put these many policemen. That's the police saying. But it's another for me to go to a policeman and tell him, ah, those are not enough for me. Give me four here, then another four there, then another four there, then another four there, and you have to give me two there, and there, and there. You understand what I'm saying? You have to get to a point where you know where your protection is. You understand what I'm saying? Now, Elisha is telling us something. That even though he was the chariot and horseman of Israel, how can then Israel protect him? It's not possible. So, you see him under attack, under siege. And you see, the Bible says, a whole army 
Yeah, to show you how dangerous this man was, how anointed this man got, eh? he became a big concern that to attack him you needed a whole army. Not five people. Uh -uh. You needed well-trained soldiers with spears and shields and swords dressed in armory to attack one fellow. But the devil got it wrong. Somebody said amen. The devil got it what? wrong and you see Elisha defeating that whole army <laughs> without raising a sword that's called the anointing that is called the one a story is talked about how one time they hired people to kill Martin Luther the reformer and they found him praying and the men which were sent to murder him ran away and they went back to their bosses and told him you'd rather kill us for we could not kill a man who prays that way <laughs> he wasn't even conscious that they came but the anointing around the man which was praying <laughs> it set the men which had come to kill him with weapons on foot to flee may God put a fear on your life that is bigger than any weapon that can ever protect you. May God put something that is bigger than any weapon that can ever protect you. That even if a thief finds you, he will run away. Even if a robber meets you on the road, he just runs away and says, What I saw on that woman cannot kill her. Somebody shout hallelujah. Again, these conversations are there because we are trying to define the anointing. The power of God. The essence of what it means to be heavily anointed by God. Now, one year or so later, the sepulcher of a great man of God is so open that they can easily throw a dead body in there. So yes, before we go into the miracle, let's think about it. How could Israel get to the level where the sepulchre of Elisha was so open that anything could be thrown there. Some was wrong. Does that mean that the anointing of Elisha had decimated? No. By order he was still the voice. But the reason why at that particular point they could throw something, his sepulchre was open, even as a man of God, who had a glory a year ago, was because there was a time Elisha's function according to purpose had ended. But there was no successor to carry the anointing for the next level. Are you understand what I'm saying? Because remember, the fellow who is supposed to carry it is after money. Gehazi. And Gehazi was prophetic when Gehazi died the man of God chooses a man who is evidently not a prophet because if he was a prophet when the Assyrians had attacked Elisha he would have seen by the time a prophet prays for his son to say open the eyes of my servant that he might see it means he was blind the Bible says Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. This was an effort of God answering the prayer of a prophet. It wasn't the life of this young prophet to see. It wasn't in the way of this young prophet to see. You must understand that the prophetic of that time was not like the prophetic of now. Back in the day, they had the prophets, the big boys like Elijah. Or Elisha okay and they had spiritual sons okay and there were prophetic schools okay and in these schools the sons were taught to see that is why if you go back into the narrative in the time of Elijah the Bible says that the sons of the prophet come to Elisha 
and ask him, do you know that the Lord is taking your master? Do you know? It? They did not receive it by rumor. But the prophetic then in that time was so purified that when an agenda was setting precedence in the spirit realm, almost the prophets and the sons were all attuned to the spirit to know. You hardly had one man seeing what the rest were not seeing. Because in the realm of vision, there is also general vision. There's a distinctive one that makes one a leader. Are you hearing me? But what separates the distinctive from the general is the detail. Are you hearing me? But regardless of how the distinctive carries the detail, at least the general prophetic has a basic pattern of ours, a certain grain that picks something about the same thing. So yes, they might have not known that Elijah was a chariot and horseman of Israel. Yes, they might have not known why Elijah was going. But at least in the general sense of the prophetic, everybody knew that Elijah was going. Who has understood what I just said? So in the sum of things, in these schools of the prophets, where they were exercised, by understanding to see. There was a general way that could see where it was not a shock. That is why they are asking Elisha. They are not sure he's a prophetic because he never attended their school. So they ask him, knowest thou that the Lord is taking away your master? And he says, I know it. So why are they sons of the prophet? They're not just biological, they're spiritual. You know, prophets took over men under them that were imparted enough to see. You understand what I'm saying? Because they were prophets, so the prophets under them could see. Now, it doesn't mean that they got a normal guy and because he sat under them as a prophet, that means they were able to star and make them a prophet because they sat under them. That's not how it works. Otherwise, Elisha's man would see. You understand what I'm saying? It's sons of prophets because these boys were born prophets and they went and sat under prophetic fellows. You understand what I'm saying? To help sharpen their eyes to see. Because in the Old Testament, the prophetic was leading the church. In the New Testament, the prophetic does not lead the church. I'm not saying that God is against prophets in the New Testament. He gave some to be prophets. But the prophetic ministry in the New Testament is a confirming ministry, not an affirming ministry. Why? Because he didn't say for as many as are led by the prophets. He said for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, so are the children of God. So we are not against the prophetic. No, we prophesy to the rule of the measure. But we are not supposed to build the New Testament led by prophetic unction. Prophetic unction confirms the leading of the Holy Spirit. When you are a child of God, before I tell you what I see, you should be able to see by the Spirit. Why? The Bible says when the Spirit is come, He shall lead you into all truth. And the Bible says, and He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, listen, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. Because you're a prophet, no, because you have the Holy Spirit. So, for every new believer who has the Holy Spirit, your future is not a mystery. You don't need me to tell you what you will be. 
if you are a lover of the Holy Spirit. But a prophet can come and confirm what I have already in my spirit. That's perfectly balanced. Why? Because some of you come to men of God to ask us what we expect the Holy Spirit should have told you. Come to us to confirm what the Spirit is saying. But then come to us to tell you what the Spirit is saying. Because that means you're empty. There is nothing in you. There is no voice in you. There is no life in you. Somebody said, Amen. No, there is a voice in you. There is a life in you. There is a living in you. You just have not exercised your ear. You've just not exercised your eyes. When you learn to exercise your eyes and your ears, you realize that you will be able to know things to come concerning you. And the office of the prophet will become very beneficial because it will come to confirm what is already in your spirit. So now, we cannot carry identities of definition under the offices. It is not true that the best apostle makes apostles in the New Testament, or the best pastor makes pastors, or the best prophet makes prophets, or the best preacher makes preachers, or the best evangelist makes evangelists. That is not the experience of the New Testament. No. That's what some are taught or teaching because that's the only way they can control men. But that's not so. You understand what I'm saying? I know many successful apostles who are raised by pastors. Many successful. I know many successful prophets who are raised by evangelists. I know many successful evangelists who are raised by apostles. I know many successful preachers who were raised by prophets. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why? Because the spirit is come. So our identity is no longer in the offices of men. It's in the person of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is why when the church began in the early church in the book of Acts, it was all full of apostles. Because by order of function, God needed the apostolic. But that doesn't mean that all the people under the first church became apostles. Philip had daughters. And the Bible says those girls used to prophesy. Agabus was a prophet. But Agabus was not a prophet because he was raised by a prophet. No, Agabus was actually raised by the apostle. So, we cannot use Old Testament understanding to define the church of the New Testament. Agabus was raised by an apostle. But he was a successful prophet. He prophesied famines and they came to pass. That doesn't mean that everybody who sat under the apostle is automatically an apostle. Philip was a what? Was an evangelist. Was he raised by an evangelist? No. He was raised under the apostolic order. Are you seeing what I'm trying to tell you? Stephanus was a street preacher. Raised under an apostolic person. So an apostle can be raised by an evangelist and the other way around too. Why? Because they are all one. The essence is the spirit, not the office. Why? Because offices are given. He gave some. No man makes you a prophet. No man makes you an apostle. You are called an apostle. 
You are called a prophet. You are called a pastor. You are called an evangelist. You are called. You just sit under the right teaching of the Spirit that stirs. Yes. We see apostles commissioning prophets in the New Testament. In the book of Acts 13, we see prophets commissioning apostles. So it's not about if you are an apostle, you sit under an apostle. If you are a teacher, you sit under a teacher. If you are a pastor, you sit under a pastor. If you are a prophet, you sit under a prophet. No. Read the word. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. I know apostles who failed to grow under an apostolic anointing. And I know even prophets who failed to grow under prophetic anointing. And I know pastors who even failed to grow under a pastoral anointing. Because the offices are for the body, not for individual callings. Did you hear that? They are for the edification of the body. Perfecting of the saints for the work of ministry to the edification of the body. And to the end of all this, that we might be what? fully grown to the measure and of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we, Bible says, might not be tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine. His problem is doctrine for the evangelist, for the pastor, for the teacher, for the apostle. His problem is the doctrine. He knows if the doctrine is right, the measure of Christ and his fullness will form up on the office he has called him. All you need is the right doctrine. That is why every one of these four must be able to teach. Now you understand why he says, and teachers, which be indeed teachers. In the book of Acts, at the separation of Paul and Barnabas, give the message version. He says, the congregation in Antioch, what was in Antioch? Much teaching. The Bible says, for at Antioch there was much teaching. And that is where believers were called Christians. The Bible says, it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves in the church and they taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Why? Because in Antioch there was much what? Teaching. And Antioch is between Jerusalem and Judea. So when men are filled by the Spirit, they are taught. So he said, preach this gospel in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. You cannot get to Judea before Antioch. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit in Jerusalem, immediately there was a huge exodus into Antioch. And from Antioch now, Judea, the Samaria, and the scatterings of the world. Meaning that when men are full of the Spirit, we expose them to doctrine, teaching. Now in the book of Acts 13, when you read the Message Bible, the Bible says, and the congregation in Antioch was blessed, listen, with a number of prophet, preachers and teachers. Did you see that? They were prophet, dash, preachers and teachers. Did you see that? Prophet, Preachers and teachers. So not just prophets. They were prophets, teachers, and preachers. So it is with apostolic teachers and preachers. Pastoral teachers and preachers. Evangelistic preachers and teachers. These are the ones, Barnabas, Simeon, Nasia, Lucia, Serenian, Manan, and all of these things. These are the ones that lay hands on Paul and Barnabas for the first missionary journey. Did Paul ever claim the office of the prophet? No. But the angel of the Lord appeared to him. God used to tell him things to come as an apostle. So don't take away the general line of access of the Spirit that is available for every believer who has the Holy Spirit. He will show you things to come. You don't need to call me. Let me confirm. Let me note a thumb. He will show you things to come. That's a mature church. 
Have you learned something? Now, let's go back to what I was trying to express here. Now, the time the servant of God had come to serve Elisha, you can see that by the time they pray for his eyes to see, there was a possibility that this boy was not prophetic. And indeed, he never carried on the prophetic anointing, even when he continued to serve the prophet. Because by identity, possibilities, he wasn't a prophet. So, the time when a man is supposed to take over this, Elisha dies with the anointing. Okay? And the Bible says, and so when they see a band of people coming, they get a dead man and throw him in the sepulcher of Elisha because it was open. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, the Bible says he revived and stood up on his feet. Now let's think. The core component of what my emphasis is about this evening. How much a man is anointed. That even his bones can give life to a dead man. Yet men with breath and voice and spirit lay hands on dead men and they don't come back to life. A man can get the Bible open the promises of God, quote every scripture, speak in tongues, weep before God, take all the God-given authority and the promises that are given, put his hand on a cold corpse and pray up to the next day and nothing happens. And in the Old Testament there is a man who is so anointed that even after his death, any remains that touch his identity are enough to connect a man to enough life to receive life. And that man becomes a living man again after a cold body. The New Testament church must explore and think. We must think. We must ponder about this thing. Deeply. We must think about it. How much anointing was in a man's life that it could stay even in his bones enough to give life to a dead body without prayer because bones don't pray. Without preparation because bones don't prepare. They just through a man's body on bones. And a man received life and stood up on his feet and walked. Thank God that this scripture exists. Because there was a chance of it happening and they never write about it. But now they wrote about it for you and I to think. I have realized this. That God can anoint a man so, so, so that everything that touches that man's identity is enough to give life. Elisha is proof in the Old Testament. Let me say it again. God can anoint a man and his essence that everything that touches that man is enough to give life to a man without speaking anything. Because that thing on that man might not be able to speak, but the anointing has enough power to speak. It opened my eyes to the reality that it's possible for God to anoint anything that touches your identity. Look at Jesus. That man walked the face of this earth. He did signs, miracles, and wonders. The lame walked the blind, so the deaf heard. And that man ascended in glory. And the Bible says, because of the anointing on his life, he was given a name. That at the sound of that name, every knee bows. In the essence, what was in the bones of Elisha entered the man's name. That when you go to hell and say, Jesus, devil's here. When you go to hell and say, Jesus, when you say cancer, in the name of Jesus, those things flee. 
For he that is sent by God speaketh the words of God. And to him is given not the spirit by measure. That means because Jesus was a carrier of the word. The anointing that was given him was not by measure. It was without measure. That means it was never limited in function and activity. It was never limited in answers and results. That is the anointing of the man you received in the inside of you. That is the man you confessed the day you said, I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. We can no longer function in inferior anointing. We can no longer function in inferior anointing. We cannot see the move of God with inferior anointings. The true move of God connects men to the person of the Holy Spirit in that name. And when it connects us there, we cannot settle for anything less. Because Elisha showed us that a soul, a man with a living soul, can connect with God enough to release life even in his bones when he's long gone. That is the anointing that preserves your ministry even when you are long gone. That is the anointing that preserves your ministry even when you are long gone. I preached a message once and I released an anointing and I prophesied in that service. And that message I preached about four years ago. And I mentioned names four years ago. And one fellow found that sermon with those names, his names in that sermon. And everything I spoke concerning that individual was him. He received an impartation. He told me the next time he started speaking, everybody was just passing out under the power of the Holy Spirit. Because an impartation awaited him four years ago. It was released in the air with his names on it. And while he was listening to the sermon, when a word was spoken, he said, I don't know whether the one they called that day was that one, but I am the one in there. He connected to something. And he says, demonstrate power. Because the anointing of the Holy Spirit is timeless. It is not bound to time. You can connect something prophesied in 1947, touching the will of God, and it connects to you in 2020, to the glory of God, because He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not limited to the time dimensions of men. The Word of God is not in the fulfillment of Kronos. It's in Kairos. So how somebody receives an impartation over someone I preached four or five years back, and probably there were people in that service that maybe didn't even connect, but a guy with the right spirit was hungry enough to pick that. That is the thing that marvels me about the anointing. That's the thing that marvels me about the anointing. I have made statements before you. One time I said, some of us received impartations from dead bones. But some of you don't understand. Let me explain. We read books of men who died long ago. But the spirit that was alive with them was alive in those pages. And we connected. We connected. Because much as they were dead, the anointing on them stayed in those books. And you read something and know this is me. I told people the story one time, I was reading of a lady, Maria Woodworth Etta, and I read her biography. And I remember very well, I was in a taxi, going. I'd read it a couple of weeks ago. And the Lord clearly told me, do you remember what you read about that dear woman? He said, you received the impartation of it. I did not know it. I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. But a woman's biography had enough anointing. And I remember very well, I sat in a car, went to minister in a church somewhere in Kawempe, and I got on the pulpit, 
and something I had never seen in my life happened. I opened the scriptures, I read three lines of that scripture, and when I raised my eyes like this, the whole church was out. I mean literally, the whole church was out. They fell down like they were dead bodies. You know, there are people who say, oh no, you don't need to fall. Let me tell you. There is an anointing that... That even if you plan and say... Now, many of the guys who criticize it, eh? many of the guys who criticize it, they tried it and it failed. I did not go in that church to tell them I'm going to lay hands on you. I did not enter that church to even define expectation. You're going to do this, you're going to get slain, because I've never seen it the way I saw it that day. I just read the scripture and I say, it sounds da, 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 da. I just hear a scream and the next thing I hear, all the chairs were out. About 50 or so people they were all out. So now because of my ignorance, then I got a chair and I sat and I said, let me wait for them after they get slain, stand up, I preach. 10 minutes, 20, 30, 40, 45 minutes. The spirit ironically tells me, keep waiting. He gave me the understanding inside my head that when I do ministry on my people, I don't need your someone. Go home. I stood up and I went home. After about three hours, the first person that wakes up calls me and tells me I've just woken up, but everybody else is still on their floor. Oh! Tell your neighbor, get connected. Tell your neighbor, get connected. Get connected. Connect to the anointing. Connect. 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 Whatever it is, connect. You don't need to be an apostle. But you surely need to be a demonstrator of the Spirit. <laughs> because this is a generation of the Holy Spirit. This is a time of the Holy Spirit. I kept asking God, what kind of anointing can sit on a man's bones while the skin is all dried? And the dead man can fall on that thing and receive life. What manner of anointing is that? What manner of anointing is that? What was on Elijah? Did Israel even know? Did Israel even have a clue on how much anointing it took? You can only know the anointing on Elijah after his death. If that story was not written, we would have had an assumption of what we thought Elisha had. But that man was anointed. He was anointed. He was anointed. Vamos anyo. Leave these things we call anointing. He was anointed. Bones? A dead body hitting bones? And it receives life? Without any command whatsoever. It's even coincidental. Boom. And a man stood strong. How much more? Spirits of men that are reconciled to God. Listen. Some of you will see it in the meetings. Some of you will see it in these crusades we go to. But every other day, I'm getting to the realization that there is a realm for the church where the anointing working on our lives will cause men to fear. If you believe it, you can shout Amen. 
where the anointing flowing on our lives will cause men to fear. Miracles will happen that will cause men to fear. That when you tell a doctor, even a doctor will fear. I think I told you of a lady whose kid, her heart had a missing what? Artery. Eh? There was a missing artery. She came up to service, I had that the kid had Down syndrome. One person told me, I have never had Down syndrome healing. And I told them, welcome to the world. A kid was healed of Down syndrome. The doctor said that that girl will never walk, never talk, never do. She's walking, she's talking. And when the mother takes the kid to the doctor, the artery grew. It grew. And yet that is nothing compared to where we are going. But our eyes must see. We have to get to a time where people just get your photo and put it on a dying woman. Some of you will put your photos next to dead bodies. And the breath of life will come in. Now, uh, whenever Twitter, even if they call us cults, that is okay. But what we are not going to settle for is for less. Somebody shout, I'm ready. What we can't settle for is less. Where you sit next to a person and say nothing, and the honey disappears. Have you seen the ease by which we do miracles? The ease of it. A tumor is disappearing. A cancer is going right now. Somebody came with a fibroid. It is disappearing. Confession. And there is a power that enters those things and cuts them out. Even in the simplest statement, without shouting. And yet God is telling us, not yet. I'm taking you deeper. 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 Wait for the new generation of prophets. You'll see what they call the prophetic. If in scripture a man could look 700 years later and see the birth of Christ, that's a prophet. A man saw 700 years ahead. And so that there's a guy going to come in the root of Jesse, in the tribe he saw. And prophesied what now we can confirm. I'm talking of men who will prophesy things that might take 2,000 years. Or 1,000 years or 500 years to come and they shall be so. They will not even be prophesying for that week. If a man in the Old Testament could smell the coming of Christ, Natalinamoyo doesn't have the Holy Spirit, but he can see the Spirit of Christ. That's a prophet. Where men will write books of a hundred year prophecies, two hundred year prophecies, and they sell them and everyone knows that they're going to come to pass. And every prophecy by the book for the next 200 years, the church knows if Christ is not yet born. And they are accurate to that detail. You might find that some of the words even spoken in this dispensation, the people of this dispensation might never fully understand. Except for those who will live the next 20, 30, 100 years. 200. That's what I was probably who might come say, oh, this is what these men were teaching. May God make your ministry relevant in the coming years. Let God put a mark on your life that will make your ministry relevant until the return of Jesus. Jesus of Until the return of Jesus. You must be relevant until the return of Jesus. We must write history. This nation will write about Fanero. You can't enter now the history of Uganda and Fanero misses. It can't. It can't. 
Think about it. You think about it. If the Kenridge Revival, the Great Awakening, they call in America, used to gather eight, ten thousand people on a weekly service. That's what they call revivals. Do you understand what I'm saying? In the history of this land, Sunday will be talked about. We've already gone past that. Someone will write about this ministry. But that's not where we are called. Africa must write. Europe must write. Asia must write. The world must write about us. That's what I see. That's what I see. I don't know what you see. What do you see when you look at yourself? Do you believe you're just going to die an ordinary life? And live a normal life and die a normal woman with your children and just live a normal life? And graduate a normal way? Pastors who are here, do you think you're just going to live a normal life? No! Something must happen. I say something must happen. We are entering a generation where you meet an apostle and they are an apostle. When you meet an evangelist, they are an evangelist. They are not guessing. When you meet a prophet, they are accurate, and they are true and deep. When you meet a pastor, they are a pastor. When you meet a preacher, they are a preacher. That's where we're going. And not far from now. Because it has already opened. The heavens have opened for that reality. Some of us have begun the state. Others are just entering it. But whether you want it or not, that seal has been opened. That scroll is open now. Any reader can read. Any reader can read. May men think about you and be healed. Tumors living men's brains because they thought about you. Because you carry a name that is above every name. Tell your neighbor, believe God. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray.
I worship you. Come on, pray, 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 as if your own life depends on this message. Come on, pray, pray, pray. This is bigger than you. This is bigger than your family. This is bigger than your nation. This is for a generation. Ripa patara paya raba kaya lava. Sara la 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 la. Saba patara paya raba. Sara la 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 la. Saba patara pa. Saba paya pa. Saba patara pa. Raba ba 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 raba kata. Raba ba ba shere pro sara pa. Yama kasha kara pa. Sara ba 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 raba na. Zakara ba 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 katara pa, come on zapa katara pa. The spirit of God is with us. Rapa kala pa ya pa, and it's available to do everything we believe God for. Even what eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and has not entered, it's only our spirits to connect. God will make a prayer of connection to the reality of the person of our Holy Spirit. And what he's able to do in the life of a man who yields to him, who inclines to him. You said what I has not seen, what he has not heard. We have the story of a light. We want to hear something we've never heard before. We have the testimony of Elisha. We want to hear something we've never heard before. And it is in our hearts. It is in our spirit. It's in our eyes. We feel it. It is in there. Now we connect for it to come out. You are the fire in me. You 
You are my ever present help. Oh, Holy Spirit, I adore. Ba 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 ya la la ba ya repose. Brakatara ba ya la 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 la. Zara ba 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 katara ba ya la ba 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 ba. Zara ba 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 repose. La ba zoro. Raba ba ba katara ba ya la ba. Zara ba 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 katara katara ba. Zara ba ya la ba zoro bo bo bo. Zara ra ra ba 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 kapra kapra, zara ra 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 re 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 ba 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 sa ta la pa, ra ba 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 ku sa ra ba 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 ra kan du, ya ra ba 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 ka sa ra pa, re 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 ba 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 ka sa ka ta ra pa, re ba 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 ra 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 re 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 bo, you are my ever present, oh no, Holy Spirit. Ra-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-
Sara Cabri, Sabane Lolo, Sabaca, Sara, 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 Sara,
connect somebody, connect somebody to something bigger than them, to something bigger than they have seen, to something bigger than they have read, to something bigger than they have understood. With his to something bigger than they could comprehend with his big, 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 Deep of God, I feel an invitation of God. I see God launch somebody so deep. I see a launching of God, a launching of God. Holy Spirit, touch that person, touch that man. Separate that man. Consecrate that woman. Now, Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit. <laughs> The Spirit of God is moving. He is moving. He is moving. He's moving. He's touching. You don't need anybody to lay a hand on you tonight. He's coming according to your hunger. He's touching according to your hunger. He's changing according to your hunger. He's anointing according to your hunger. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Power of the Holy Ghost. There he goes. There he goes. Somebody receive it. Somebody receive it. Connect to what's here right now. Connect to the anointing that is present now. I feel it. I feel it in the air. Power of the Holy Ghost! Thank you, Lord. Connect. 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 The apostle. Connect. The prophet. There he goes. The prophet. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. The pastor. There he goes. The evangelist. There he goes. The preacher. There he goes. The worshiper. There he goes. There he goes! Thank you, Lord. My God. My God. My God. Oh, la 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 la
is touching, is finished. I see a great anointing for worshippers. Anybody call in that office? Something is catching you tonight. Something is catching you tonight. The Spirit of God is separating you tonight. <laughs> I see God anoint men for nations. For nations. Not districts, not areas, not communities, but for nations. And whoever I am talking about, the power of God is coming on you now. Now. For nations! Now! Now! Bow it is! Bow it is! Bow it is! Bow it is! Nations are seeking! Nations are seeking! Bow it down! Bow it down! Bow it down! Bow it down. La 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 Nation! Nation! God is giving you something that is going to put nations to the knees for Jesus. I know who I'm talking to. I know who I came for. Pat all the girls! Pat! 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 Your voice will be heard. Your voice will be heard. Touch! 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 Nations will open. You will not enter them as a fresh people. You'll enter them with a message. Whether you're a business person, or a preacher, or a lawyer, whatever you're called, nations are going to bow to your God. He'll give you enough wealth if he asks you for them to believe your God. Wisdom. Anointing. I sing a bosatalaba. Hey! Sarababa kora baba. Thank you, Lord. We are going to see God like we've never seen him. We're going to see God like we have never seen him. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing. You're going to call on Jesus seven times. You need to get this. You're going to call on Jesus seven times. I feel something is in the air. <laughs> oh my God. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Receive it! Receive it! Receive it! Receive it! Yeah! Whatever comes in contact with you will leave. Whatever comes in contact with anything of your essence, identity, or person, in Christ will leave. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Give the Lord a mighty heart of praise. If you're sick in your body, God is healing you now. Cancer is living. 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 In the name of Jesus. Families are changing. Families are changing. The power that changes homes is moving now. The power that changes households is moving now. Witchcraft is no more. If you're here and you're not born again and you've never given Jesus Christ your life as your Lord and Savior repeat this word after me say Lord Jesus I thank you for today I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that you died for my sin and was raised for my glory Tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.